Hi, and welcome to the Overstimulation Station. Have you ever wondered why certain computers and game consoles turn this hideous yellow color? Well, in short, it's the flame retardant chemical that's in the plastic mixture, and it responds to high levels of heat, UV light from the sun, or from just a regular light bulb in your house, etc. So, what can we do about it? When I was little, I thought my Super Nintendo was yellow because my grandparents would smoke so much cigarettes inside the house that the nicotine literally caked onto the Super Nintendo. Now I know that's not the case, but I still like to pretend it is because I think it's the more hilarious answer to why it's yellow. Well, the way to fix it is quite simple. A while back I saw a video on the 8-Bit Guys channel where he talks about restoring these ancient fossils back to their original color. It's a great channel, it's very informative and entertaining if you like gadgets and old computer stuff like I do, so you should go check that out. I'm basically doing this video as an average Joe's kind of test to see if his method actually works. This is Salon Care 40 Volume Cream, it's a stabilizer formula used for dyeing hair. Well, it also happens to have a high volume of hydrogen peroxide in it, and it's also in cream form, so you can smear it on your console or game and it's going to stay there. The second thing you're going to need is Q-tips for said smearing. The third thing you're going to need is some cling wrap to put over the console after you smear it on so it does not evaporate. The next thing you're going to need is a UV light, aka a black light, or the sun. Now thankfully we live on planet Earth so we all have a sun, but I also have a UV light so I'm going to use that because it's more of a higher concentration of UV light and I've never tried the sun test before but it can be done supposedly. Now the final thing you're going to need that's kind of optional but not really especially if you want to be working on old Nintendos is something called bit drivers. Now these are very specific bits that fit into Super Nintendo cartridges and regular Nintendo cartridges and the system itself. They come in two sizes, you can find them on eBay super cheap, which by the way reminds me you can find the Salon Care stuff on Amazon for pretty cheap as well, or you could also find it at a beauty supply store. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to want to do is unscrew everything and parcel it apart because you don't want to spread it all over the Super Nintendo. It's got electronics inside of it and that, that could seriously mess it up. So I'm going to unscrew this thing and only take the yellowed pieces and separate them out. And I'm going to do the same with, I have an old PlayStation here that's pretty yellow. And even kind of a rare Super Nintendo game, Chrono Trigger. It's got yellowing on the front. I'm gonna try that. I don't know how it's gonna turn out. A little bit nervous, but uh, let's go ahead and do that now. So now that we have the systems all taken apart, next you're going to want to put on your gloves. Trust me, you don't want to skip this step. Alright, next what we're going to do is open up the uh, developer cream here. And take one of our Q-tips. I'm going to dip it in the solution here. And you're just going to start spreading it as evenly as possible on the console. coated that with paste. Now we're going to apply our cling wrap. Now I'm in the room with the black light and I have put the game consoles under the cling wrap under the black light. There's the chrono trigger right over there. 
Now all we gotta do is turn out the light. And now we wait. All right, I've let this stuff sit overnight with the paste on there, and let's see how they look so far. Well, as you can see, the PlayStation looks great. Pretty much totally restored it. Got rid of all the yellowing. What about the Chrono Trigger? Chrono Trigger's looking pretty good. It definitely got a few shades lighter. But now for the son of the bitch. Super Nintendo, still pretty damn yellow. So what we're gonna do is put more paste on this and let it sit under the black light for a really, really long time. And I will get back to you. All right, and as you see, I'm wearing a different shirt because it's been a few days later. I had to let that Super Nintendo sit a few extra days under that UV light because overnight just wasn't long enough to get out some of those deep, deep yellow stains in the plastic. So without further ado, let's get to how the consoles and the game turned out with our little peroxide slash retro bright test. All right, first up we have our Chrono Trigger. As you can see from the, the front here, um, it took out a lot of the, those yellow stains from before and you can compare it to the top here in the back that I didn't put under the UV light. There's still some yellowing, but the front was definitely picked up a few shades. Uh, the area I had to cover around to protect the label still has some yellowing, but all this part here has kind of pretty much been restored back to uh, its original color. So I would say that would be a success if I was able to cover the whole thing. Up next we have our PlayStation, significantly less yellowing up front, and we can compare this by looking at the bottom. See right around here, it's still yellow because I didn't do the bottom part, I was just trying to test this to see if it even worked. And now that I know it works, I can do the rest of it. So yeah, the PlayStation test definitely worked. Alright, and finally our Super NES. Now you can see a lot of the stains have been taken out. It's definitely gone up a few shades lighter and looks a lot better than it originally did. And we can compare this to the bottom. Look at how yellow that is. It's pretty much what the top looked like too before I did this test. So you can have a little side-by-side -side comparison right here to see. Now this had to stay under the UV light for about three or four days with multiple coats of that paste being put over it. So this definitely took a lot longer than both of the other systems. Just as a fair warning though, this test can be taken too far. This was a game that had a little bit of yellowing on the back and I decided to do a test on this one as well. And it's bleached it a little bit. And you can see that by the comparison here. This is the color that an NES, a Super NES cartridge should be, and this is much lighter. So if you look at the front, and you look at the back, this was left on for probably a little too long. So you can go overboard with it. Also, if you're going to do this, I think it would be wise to uh, do them both, the front and back side, at the same time, so they'll at least get the same shade. And I would definitely say experiment with a game that you don't care about messing up, hence why I did Cool Spot, because it's like a $3 game. So at long last, the experiment's over. Did it work? Well, yeah, it did work. Um, are the results super consistent, like across the whole system? It depends. It depends on how you spread it out. It depends on how long you leave it under the light. It's, there's kind of a science to it, and you're going to have to do some experimentation. But good results can be achieved, as you saw from my experiments, and I definitely recommend it's worth a try if the yellowing of your games and systems bothers you as much as it bothers me. My name is Josh Cannon. This is the Overstimulation Station. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to my channel, and also check out my other videos, show them some love, and uh, hope everyone has a good rest of your week. Thank you and good night.